what I'd like to do is set up my perspective views. You'll need to submit three or four views, and I'll walk you through all of them. Definitely one view from the exterior, looking at it from a bird's eye view or what I call a drone view also. Another view that's eye level from the exterior. Another view that's eye level from inside of the building. And then the fourth view is going to be a section cut through the site that matches your section, the section cut in your AutoCAD drawing. So let me go ahead and start. I have a lot of information open over here on the side, so I'm just going to collapse it like this. And what I'd like to do is open up my scenes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some views and I'm going to save them. And when I save them, they get saved here as scenes. Let me go ahead and get started. To set up a view, it's no different than what we've been doing so far, which is basically just zooming in and orbiting, just finding the right spot. I'm going to begin with this bird's eye view. I also call it a drone view. And I wanna make sure that I'm looking down at my property, that I'm able to see it. And what I'd like to do is make sure that I'm not seeing anything beyond my property. In other words, I don't wanna zoom it out too far like this because then it looks like I'm floating in an island, right? There's no connection. But as soon as I bring my view in a bit more, now I lose that effect. Now it does look like it's in a neighborhood. That's what I'd like to accomplish. And if needed, I can always take my streets, and I'll give this a double click, and I can always take that edge and simply move it out a little bit more. Little trick, if I needed to. And if I wanted to, I can also take this sidewalk and the curve and actually mirror it to the other side to put the sidewalk over there and to make this street, you know, give it the right width and really give it that appearance. It's entirely up to you what you'd like to do. Let me set up my view here, my bird's eye view, my drone view, and I'll, I'll do this more or less. If I like that view and I'm noticing that I'm seeing beyond my sight and it looks a little empty, I can change this angle. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna come over here to the zoom tool and I'm going to click on it. And when I click on it, I'm not going to use it. I'm just looking at the field of view and it tells me it's 35 degrees. And what I'm going to do now is change it. And I'm going to increase that value and I'm going to go 50 and enter. When I go 50 and I enter, it widens the lens, which means it's showing me more. And it's really emphasizing the fact that I haven't completed my model here. I don't want to give that secret away. Instead of going with a higher value, I'm going to go with a lower value. So I was at 35 and I'll put it back at 35. So I'm typing 35 and I'll enter. And now I'm going to type 30 and enter. And notice how it zooms me in a bit. What if I try 25 and enter? That could work also. As I start to change that value and lower it, you notice how I'm losing that perspective effect. So I really want to be careful not to lose too much of that because it's now starting to look like an isometric drawing. Just to make sure that it's not isometric, I'm going to come over here to my camera and I will double check and it is set to perspective. So I'm not going to touch that. I'm just going to click off of it and continue. I can set it to 25 and notice how it does more or less zoom me in and I can use that. Or I could go back to that 50 degree field of view like this. And now I could zoom in and still try to keep it at bird's eye view like this. Notice what I did. I just brought my view closer and I'm able to widen the view. So that could work as well. Of course, I'm really seeing a lot of my roof and that's okay for this view. That's just what's going to happen. I can try, let's see, let me go ahead and click on my select tool again. And I can try to orbit now and see if I can find a better view without showing part of my model that ends. Maybe the trick here, oh wait, I am cutting it off. I was going to say the trick also is to increase and add more properties over there, but it's okay. I was uh, not understanding my view here. So I'm just going to orbit, change this around a little bit, maybe angle it up. 
So that could work out. As long as I'm seeing your site, should be okay. The next thing I want to do here is I want to turn off my axes. So to do that, I will go to view right here shows me that the axes are turned on and I'm going to turn those off. Also, if any of you have guides that were dropped in when you use the tape measure, go ahead and go back to view and turn those guides off. That way it presents a clean image. So this is the view that I want to use. And what I'm going to do now is click on the add scene button. It tells me that I'm going to create or update a scene and I've not saved the changes. What would I like to do? And it's okay to leave it at save as a new style and then go ahead and create the scene. And you'll notice it gives me the scene right here. It says scene one. I don't, I guess I could leave it as scene one, but I would also like to try and rename that scene. So I right click and click rename. And instead of this being scene one, I'll call it my bird's eye view. And notice what it's indicating. What it's going to save is the camera location and all of that other information. And that's fine. So once I type in that name, I can go ahead and enter. And it's changed it. You'll also notice that it's now created a tab. And this tab is now a scene. Here's what's really nice about this is I can now zoom out. I can change my zoom magnification again, set it to 35 like that. I can continue to make changes and updates to my model. When I do that, I can come back over here and click on the bird's eye view and notice how it takes me to that view. And that's really nice. And you saw how it slowly transitioned. And I'll show you how to adjust that transition. So that's my bird's eye view, all saved. So that's one view that you have to provide. The next view that you need to provide is going to be an exterior view. And it's going to be eye level. And it's going to be standing outside, looking towards the building. You can choose to stand anywhere that you want. Would you like to stand at the entrance here looking at the front or you would like to come over to the back side and look at your building from the back and of course you'll have doors you'll have windows you might even have some patio furniture to make it look nice and interesting something like this could also work it's entirely up to you it just simply has to be an exterior view and you should be at eye level let me show you how to get to eye level I'm going to come over here to the front. Let's just assume that I'd like a front view like this. So I'm going to come in here like that, try to get it eye level. And then I'm going to come over to my icons and click on this one that reads look around. It's an eye, so I'm going to click on it. And when I do that, I look down in the lower right-hand corner of my screen and it indicates eye height. And that symbol that you see at the beginning is basically telling me it's around or about four feet, three and some fraction of inches. That's my current eye height. I would like to set this to a typical eye height, anywhere from four feet, six inches, all the way up to maybe six feet, six inches. You can set it to your eye height or somewhere in between. I'm going to go with five foot, six inches here. So I'm simply going to type in five feet, six, and then enter. And you notice how it changes. So now my eye level is five foot six. And now from here, I still have that eye as my icon, as my cursor. And what I'm going to do now is simply click and drag and pan around to take a look. If I pan around this way, you notice I don't have any information there. You know, I can see the horizon line and it's vacant. So my eye gets drawn to that portion that's far away. And I don't want to do that. I want my eye to really focus on my building. I'm going to bring it over here until I no longer see that horizon line. I see more buildings. And now this gives me that appearance of being in my neighborhood. 
then that's the bird's eye view. And I can save that view. If I wanted to, I can also go ahead and click on this icon where it says to walk. And if I click on that, now I'm simply going to click and drag inside of the model. So I'm going to click one time. And now I'm going to move my cursor up while still holding down the mouse button. And this will allow me to walk towards my building. And then I release it. And if I'd like to, I could step back. So I click and drag down, and that will take me away. So I can do a lot of adjusting here. I always like to go back to the eye icon, the look around and double check and make sure it's still set to five foot six, which it is. You're also welcome to still use the pan tools and the zoom tools to adjust it. I'll go back to my selection tool here. And now I'd like to hold down the shift, use my wheel mouse and just pan it over like that. And notice how I'm moving up and down a little bit and that's okay. Now I'm going to release it, go back to my look around. You notice how it changes the eye height. It's now five foot 10. So I'm just going to adjust it again to five foot six and enter. And that'll fix it for me. This is the exterior view at eye level. I'm also noticing right now as I look at this that my AutoCAD drawing is still visible. So I'm going to take those tags and make sure that I turn them off. So let me do that now. I basically just want to keep everything that's 3D on and everything else gets turned off. Okay, maybe that stays on and that stays on. Be very mindful of what you are turning off and the guides. Okay, that was from an AutoCAD drawing, I believe, and I'll leave that alone. What was this for? That may be warehouse objects that are inside of my building. Just be mindful of that. To really make this look a little more realistic, it's time to turn shadows on. And we haven't done this before. I have not saved the view yet, so I'm going to set my shadows and then I'll save it. And I keep calling it a view, but I have to use the SketchUp terminology and it would be a scene. So what I'm going to do now is come over to the view tab and turn on shadows. I'm going to click that on. And it changes this. I can adjust the shadows. I come over here to my default tray and expand the shadows from here. Go ahead and leave that UTC at seven and the time of day. I can pick the time of day. I can also pick the date. So let's say, for example, I pick a summer date and that would be somewhere around June 20th or June 21st. Let me click on this icon here and I'll come back. And notice how it says 2013. It doesn't matter. In fact, I can go to today. And then I can click on this again and change it to June and let's say June 20th. And I know that's the day where we have the most sunlight. You can also throttle your line here, this bar back and forth to adjust. That could be a little tricky, but still doable. Change it to 623, but I can go ahead and bring it back and set it to 621. Now for the time of day, I can go ahead and change that up also. And here you can see. The sun is rising very, very early, and really, I'm getting nothing but shadows in my view here. So that's not going to be good. So I want to take this sun and bring it over until I no longer have those shadows facing me. And now the sun is behind me. Go ahead and pick an angle that's really going to show the depth of your building, the setbacks. I like this angle right now. And in fact, I'm going to change it just a little bit more, maybe like that. And I like it because it's giving me the shadow and then it's angling here as it goes down the wall and then it's coming across. And then it's also giving me a shadow line right along the roof. I like this look. Once you have everything set up, then go ahead and save the scene. Let me go ahead and do that now. And I'll scroll down over here. Wait a second, I'm scrolling and I'm actually still, wait a second, I'm still in this shadow. So let me change that again. I think I had it somewhere here. Oh, and my date changed. All right, let me fix that. 
and then come back over here. I didn't realize that the focus was still on that tab. Not going to be able to replicate anymore, am I? Not sure what I did. Just trying to adjust it. I'll leave it here for now. Now I'll go down to my scenes and I'll go ahead and click on the add scene button. And it has added this new scene. And now I'm going to collapse all of the other windows. This is scene number two. It's telling me the name. I'm going to go ahead and change that. This will now be eye level exterior. I can go ahead and enter. So now it has saved that view. And you can see up here in the tabs, I have those two views saved. Now, if I click on bird's eye view, notice how it transitions me to that view, nice and slow. Then I can click on eye level exterior. And when I transition there, I've got my shadows in place. But I'd like to add shadows to my bird's eye view as well. So I'll get there in just a second. But this is how I would save the views. Now, you notice how they're transitioning. Let me explain that. If I go over to my view, I hover over animation, and then I go to settings. So in the settings, it shows me that it has enabled scene transitions. And it's going to take two seconds to transition from one scene to the next. And then the scene delay is one second. Now, it's a nice feature. If you'd like to show this to somebody else, and you can even have it play through the different scenes. But I choose not to do that, only because I've used other programs to do some animation or to do some final renderings. In this case, I simply want to save the views and I'm not going to enable scene transition. I turn it off. It doesn't mean you have to. You can leave it on and change the number of seconds for the transition and also for the delay. So now I'll close this. And now when I transition between one and the other, it just takes me straight from one view into the other. And it's quick. I usually save scenes so that I can see what I'm doing and I can quickly change from one view to another. So I don't have the time and sometimes I don't have the patience to wait for it to transition. So I like it when it just jumps from one to the other. Let me go back to the bird's eye view because I do want to make a modification here. I would like to add a shadow. I have it currently set. Now I'm going to click on view and I'm going to turn the shadows on. And now in this case, maybe, maybe I do want to see the shadows in front of my building. I will go to shadows. And the other thing also is I'd like to turn off that AutoCAD drawing file that I brought in. I'm going to click over here on the tags and turn off the tag that I brought in from my AutoCAD drawing. So let me just take care of that. I'll go into the shadows and I'll expand that. And I'd like to set the time as well as the date. You can keep the same dates or you can pick a different one, whatever is best for you. And I think what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'll click on today, and then that'll take me close enough to where I want to be that I just go back in there. And then I go back a month, select the same date, and then I throttle the time backwards and forwards to see what it is that I'd like to use. Maybe that works. I don't know. Now I'm going to take it in this direction. Maybe that's a nice shadow. I'm going to leave this up to you to decide what you'd like to do. That could work. Well, let's see if I bring it back here. That's kind of nice also. Maybe I change the date now. Maybe I don't want my sun to be that high up in the sky in June. It's a lot lower in the earlier portions of the year and the later parts of the year. So now if I take it over to, let's say, September, that changes it also. And now I can switch the time as well and see what I'll get play around with this. And I mean that in the kindest of ways. And it will help you to understand the sun settings too. I'm just going back and forth. I'm just trying to find something that works for me. I think I'll leave it there. So now I want these changes to apply to the scene. I'm going to click on the selection tool. And then I'm going to come up to the bird's eye view tab, right click it. 
and update. So now my scene has been updated. Let's see if it works. If I switch to eye level exterior, that was saved. Now, if I go back to bird's eye view, I should have the shadows. And there they are. Next thing to do is set up an interior view. Now, this one could be a little tricky, only because I have a roof on my building and I also need to get inside the building. But let me show you a little trick here. I'm going to turn on x-ray mode. And now that allows me to see inside of the building. And then in my views, I'm going to set this to a top view. And now I'm going to pan my view until I see my building. This may or may not work. I'm about to find out. I'd like to place myself inside of my building. So I'm going to come over to my large tools here. And I'm going to click on this icon where it says position camera. So I'll click on that. I come over to my building and it wants to know where I'd like to place the camera. I'd like to place the camera here in my building. But notice it's selecting the roof. And I don't know if I can work around that. Now maybe I try wireframe. And when I go with wireframe, looks like it ignores the roof. So this might be the way to go. I'm going to select the camera position right here. So I give it one click and it took me into the building. But let me do this a little different. Let me just switch this back to a top view and start all over. What I'm going to do to position the camera, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. Select the camera position, click and hold down that mouse button. And now it's asking me to select a point that the camera is aimed at. So I'd like to stand in the kitchen looking out towards my living dining area. So now I will go ahead and release the mouse button and it changes that view. And you'll notice that it put it at an eye height of zero because it basically just looked through the building and assumed that I wanted to be at zero. Here's where I can change that eye height and I'll set it to five foot six inches, enter, and it placed me in the building. Now I can go ahead and change it from wireframe back to shaded or shaded with textures either one of the two, and I'll pick this one. And I'm also going to turn off X-ray now. And this is the view that I get. You will have components in your spaces. You can put in dining room tables, living room furniture. I mean, fill it in so that you get a nice view and pick a nice view. And you're also going to have more windows than I have. So you're going to be able to see outside of your building, unlike mine, because it's not finished. It was not intended to be finished. It was just meant to be an example to show you how to begin the process. And yours will look complete, more complete than mine. From here, what I'd like to do is actually walk a little bit closer to my living dining space. I'm going to use the walk tool, click on that. And then I'm simply going to click and drag up. So click down here and then drag up to move forward. It might stop me because I'm at that cabinet. It can't take me past that point. But what I can do is I can go ahead and just roll my wheel mouse and move forward. Let me click on the select tool. Here's where I stand. I'd like to zoom in a little bit more. So I'm just going to use my wheel mouse and move forward like this. That gets me past the counter. And now if I wanted to, I can continue to walk. So that's how I bypass that. And if I can't walk further, that's okay. Go back to my select tool and continue to zoom closer like that. Now I use the walk tool again, click and drag, and I made it past. Now I'm moving forward. And now if I actually click and drag down, now it's actually going to stop me when I get to that counter. I'm taking this nice and slow. 
It actually jumped up on the counter. You see that? And that's all right. I want to go back to my look around. And that eye height is seven feet plus. I'm just going to set it back to five foot six inches. Enter. And I'm already imagining what this would look like if I had the furniture in there. I think it would be a nice space. So now what I'd like to do is use the magnifying glass, which is the zoom tool. And field of view is set to 50. If I change that to 35, notice how it shortens it up. And maybe I want to go wider. So maybe I switch it and I go to 60 degrees and enter. So that begins to widen it. But it can also dramatically change it and maybe be a little too drastic. So just be mindful of that. I wouldn't push it past 60 degrees here. So I could do that. And now if I wanted to, I can come over here and use the pan tool and just pan my view over a little bit like this. And now I can see inside of that room, which is kind of nice. I'll stand right here. I can use the look around tool and basically change my view so I can look at it this way. And the eye height is five foot five. I want to set it to five foot six exactly. So five foot six, enter. And this is the view that I want. I still want to keep my shadows on, but I want more of a shadow coming into my space. I know that I have that Southern exposure right now. That's where the opening is. So I think I'm going to pick a time of the year where the sun is lower in the sky. I will go over to my shadows and pick a date, either a January, February date or November, December. So let me go over here, go with November. And you notice when I do this, it's bringing the sun down because that's really how it is in reality. And instead of 947 AM, let's see if I bring it in a little bit lower, I can get a shadow. See, now that's bringing a shadow up against the wall. Now, as I bring my time forward, it puts the shadow on the ground right about there, which is nice. And then I can continue to extend it. And now I want to be a little dramatic with it. And I think I, think I like that. But that's me controlling it. And I want you to have that same control. Now, notice it's 2.30 on a November date. But if I go back to a June or July date, notice how high it is in the sky. I just would never get sunlight in there. So I want to really express the sunlight in my space. So I'll bring it back to that date of November. So right there. That looks good. Again, you're going to have furniture in yours that you bring in from the 3D warehouse. It'll look really nice. This is the scene I would like to save. So I'll go ahead and add a scene. And this one is going to be renamed, and this one will be eye level interior. And then enter. And I noticed that I made a typo here on the eye level exterior. So I'm going to click on eye level exterior and then go ahead and fix that name and enter. So I have three views. And I'll just simply come over here to my tabs, take a look at the bird's eye view, then take a look at eye level, and then interior, and then eye level exterior. And notice with all three views, I do get a sense that this project is on a residential city lot, and there are buildings around it. Add some people to give it a nice sense of scale, give you a sense of depth. The really nice thing about these views, to really make them pop a bit, is to always put something in the foreground, which is in the front, something in the midground, which is our building, and then something in the background, which happened to be the conceptual masses, and then way back here, the tree. And that gives me a nice sense of depth. And then, of course, I'm positioning my camera so that my project really is at not necessarily the exact center of my scene, but close enough where I can take a look at the building and I can see that it's on a corner lot. And if I look towards the left, I see the other buildings in the background. It really does give me a sense of place, sense of neighborhood. It contextualizes it. So that's what I would like you to do with your projects and go ahead and embellish as much as you want to give it a really solid look and feel. 
one more to go. And this is going to be the section through the building. And I would like you to match the section that you have in your AutoCAD presentation sheet. To construct a section, let me go ahead and first of all, let me zoom out. And let me go ahead and turn off the shadows. Turn those off. Set my camera, make sure it's still perspective. Okay. My zoom, I'll go ahead and set that to 35. And go back to my select tool and simply orbit. And you'll notice without that shadow, it really changes it. It looks to me like a gray, overcast, cloudy kind of day. So now with this view, what I'd like you to do is give it that section cut. So how do you add a section cut? If I come over to my tool set, you'll see that I can add what's called a section plane. So I'm going to click on that. And when I click on section plane, you're going to see this show up on screen where it's ready to put a plane and then cut through that plane. If I place it here, it's actually just going to be parallel to my sidewalk. And I don't want that. And as I move this around, you'll notice how it's going to align to a face. Right here, it could even align to the roof at that angle. But what I really want to do is control it so that it is aligned to the length of my building. Feel free, you know, I have my axes turned off, so I don't know if I need to align to red or green. So I'm going to use my right arrow key first. I'll click the right, and I notice that if I do that, it's actually aligning to the front, and I don't want a section through the front like that. So I'm going to use my left arrow key. And now that's going to give me the uh, plane that I wanted. And I just find it easy to go ahead and pick anywhere near your building like this, give it one click. And now it says name section plane. Go ahead and just leave it section one and leave that symbol as one, and that's fine. Just go ahead and click okay. And you'll notice if I zoom out, it has actually dropped in that section plane, which is a section cut right there on that face. I don't want it exactly there. I actually want to move it in. I have it highlighted and I know that because it's blue. And what I'd like to do is move it. I type M. And when I type M, I'm simply going to click anywhere out here in space, click, and then move it in. And you see by moving it in what it's doing to my building. It's giving it a cut through. Go ahead and match it up with the section cut that you have. Let's say your section is right about here. If I give it a click and I take a look at my building, I can now see through it. This is similar to the 2D drawing that you have. I'm not going to say it has to match exactly because that's a little tricky to do, but if it's close enough, you're going to be okay. And in my section, you'll notice it's missing information. I don't have the structure shown. It's basically just a one inch thick surface there that's showing the ceiling. That's okay. My goal for you is to make sure that you understand what it means to put a section cut through a building and you understand it in SketchUp. Something like this is good enough. And then go ahead and pan around. And by the way, let me go ahead and tap the space bar and then click off of the section. And you'll notice it's still there. And then the area that I'm cutting through is pochade, meaning that it is dark, a nice solid color. In this case, all you need to do is just find a view that you think really highlights that section. And if you think looking straight at it is going to do the trick, that's fine. Or at an angle like this, that's cool too. You can go ahead and do something like that. If you'd like to keep it at eye level, you know, five foot six, you can go ahead and do that also. Click on the look around icon, set the eye height to five foot six and enter. And then perhaps look around like this, click and drag. That's okay to do that. And I'm looking inside of my building and this is a perspective view of it. And of course, I'm gonna have my AutoCAD drawing. It's gonna be two dimensional, which is basically flat and it's going to complement it. That's the section cut. If you like it, great. If you'd like to make some changes, that's okay. Zoom it back out, find that section plane, click on it, 
and then go back to your model like this. And what I like to do is simply type M, click anywhere in the model, and then just move it back. And now the section changes, it changes. Now it's cutting through the other wall and I can see completely through the building now. So if I click now, that'll work. And then tap the space bar, click off of the section, and there's the cut going through it. And then I'll simply pick a nice angle, nice perspective here. Perhaps instead of keeping it eye level, in my case, I kind of like this height. I'm going to round it off to, say, nine feet. And then I'll go ahead and click and drag. And that looks OK. And don't worry, in this case, there's going to be empty spaces in front. You know, I might be able to see beyond my buildings. Don't worry about that. Again, the purpose here is to demonstrate that you understand how to put a section cut in there. Once you have that view, you're OK. And then if you'd like to, just throwing this out there, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, go ahead and open up the styles. And by the way, if you don't see all of these different options in your default tray, you could go over to Window, Default Tray. If you don't see styles, go ahead and make sure to check it so that it is on. Now I'm going to click on Styles. And you'll notice I have different styles here. Go ahead, and if you'd like to change it, by all means. These are the styles that I can borrow from. I've got sketchy edges. Let me just show that one to you. What does that look like? If I go with airbrush, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Airbrush with endpoints. Play around with it. That's a dry erase. It might be a little too much for me. Marker thin, maybe. But let me see. What if I just go wires here? Maybe. Play around with it. And let's see, I was using marker thin like this. If I have that one selected and I go to edit, I can now change or modify the edges. So let's see if I turn them off. That's what happens, but I do want to keep those edges on. Profiles, what does that do if I turn that off? Changes it a little bit. And then the extensions and then halo. So the extensions right now are set to three. What if I turn those off? I see wherever they're connecting, now they're not. So I'll do the extensions there. I can change that value from three. Let's try six and enter. Notice how they go past the connections. You might like that. This is the type of stroke that you have. There's the level of detail. I just want you to play around with this. If you don't like it, that's okay. You don't have to use it. I'm just giving it to you as an option. And if you like it, go with it, save the view. And if you don't, simply come back to select, go back to the default styles, and then just leave it with, let's see, which default style do I have? May have been this one. And if you want, you can go ahead and edit that one too. Those are some options. Once you like what you see, save that scene. And I'll go ahead and click the plus sign here. The scene I'm adding that are being seen for. This is now going to be my section cut. And then I'll go ahead and enter. One, two, three, four views. That's the bare minimum. If you'd like to make more views and include them, you're more than welcome to. You can do some really, really nice presentation views by changing some of the default styles, or rather the styles uh, from default to something else. There's plenty to pick from here. You're more than welcome to turn on your shadows. Maybe that'll make a difference for you. I want you to embellish as much as you want. And in my case, I don't think I want the shadows. Just want to keep it nice and simple as a, um, a section cut through the building, nice two point perspective view. Those are the views to have. Time to print the views out. Let me go back to bird's eye view here. What I'm going to do is come over here to file, and I'd like to do a print setup first. Microsoft Print to PDF and Tabloid Landscape. 
and then I'll go ahead and click OK. So that sets up my sheet. Next thing I'll do is come over here to File, and I'm going to do a Print Preview. For my Print Preview, I would like to print the current view. You could also print scenes, but let me just take this one at a time here. The current view, print size. I would like to do my best to fit it to the page. And then what is the page size? The width was 17. The height was 11. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And it's showing me the print preview. Now, don't stress if it's not filling the sheet up completely. It's okay if there's a little bit of space at the top or the bottom. This is just to output a PDF. I'm going to be able to see your models. I'll see the scene saved in them. Typically, yes, we do output PDFs like this, um, but a lot of times we're actually taking the models, taking them into a rendering software, and we're outputting JPEG images of the rendered views. This will do. And then all you have to basically do is click print. And when you do that, here's the Microsoft print to PDF. Everything should already be saved. And then just click OK. And it will output. And go ahead and just simply name it first initial last name. Now, I've not used Microsoft Print to PDF before, so I'd like to see the results here before I go ahead and say we're all done. So give me one second while I open that file, and this is what it looks like. If I hover towards the bottom left corner, it does tell me that it is on an 11 by 17 sheets, so all set.